Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. It's me, Demetra K of the Demetra K Show here on YouTube and a proud contributor of the African Diaspora News Channel and the African Diaspora News Insider. If you could please do me a favor and subscribe to all channels and like this video, I would greatly appreciate it. So Julianne Malvo, who is an American author and economist, and she used to be the president of Bennett College, which is a black college. She penned a column regarding the Congressional Black Caucus, and she told us not to take them for granted. Now, the article starts off like this. All too often, the Congressional Black Caucus gets a bad rap. What do they do, many ask? What have they recently accomplished? Are they leaning on their revolutionary or, um, origins? Their founding in 1971, the once widely publicized People's Budget? Have they become a go-along to get-along politicians as usual? Yes, they have, but she said some other things. So let's continue on. So she says, I was reminded of the efficacy of the Congressional Black Caucus when I recently interviewed Dr. Cherise Janae Nelson, a Howard University educated uh, political scientist whose recent book, The Congressional Black Caucus, 50 Years of Fighting for Equality, recounts the history of black political participation at the congressional level. So this particular um, author was talking about the things of the Congressional Black Caucus since their inception of 1971. All right, and so then Julian went on to say this. My idols are the activists like Congresswomen, Maxine Waters, Sheila Jackson Lee, Barbara Lee, and Karen Bass, newcomers like Cori Bush and Lucy McBath, have also earned my admiration for their strong position and willingness to go against the grain. Go against the grain, but what have they done specifically for black people? Because going against the grain to do what exactly? You know what I mean? All right, and so let's continue on here. So then she says, I'm lifting these black folk during this Black History Month because they deserve it. At the same time, I can't completely take my critic hat off it is shameful that so many did not support H.R. 40 when Congressman John Conyers lived. And so she says, you know, I'm going to support them and lift them up during Black History Month. But there are a few in the Congressional Black Caucus who did not do anything uh, to support black people. And as you guys know, H.R. 40 is the study of reparations. It's not a bill that's going to be signed and we're going to get checks. It's a study. And y'all haven't heard them talk about that in a very long time. And so, you know, you keep hearing these words when it comes to the Congressional Black Caucus of championing or supporting in their efforts, but it's like, what have they done? All right, so moving right along. Uh, so she talks about how the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, they support a dinner called the Phoenix Awards. And the Phoenix Awards was named for that of a closing speech of a congressman back in the 1800s during the post reconstruction and his name was uh george white all right and so he said this we have 140,000 farms and homes valued in the neighborhood of 75 i'm mean, sorry 750 million and personal property valued at 170 million we have raised about 11 million for educational purposes we are operating successfully several banks, commercial enterprises among our people in the Southland, including one silk mill and one cotton factory. We have 32,000 teachers in the schools of the country. We have built, with the aid of our friends, about 20,000 churches and support seven colleges. Now that was back then in 1871, I believe it is. And so it's like, okay, 
That's what I call progress, especially right out of slavery when black people left the plantations with literally the clothes on their back and sometimes no shoes on their feet. That is progress. And so she goes on to say this, Congress Men White spoke of progress. There is still much room for advancement. The Congressional Black Caucus members are agents of progress. Criticize them, if you will, but embrace them. They are the conscious of Congress. They are our champions. Champions of what? Julian, I'm asking the champions of what? What you have wrote was a, le a love letter to the Congressional Black Caucus for doing absolutely nothing for black people. And so we keep hearing progress. Now, what I read a second ago of the congressman back during the post reconstruction era, that was progress. But what are you talking about progress now? What have black people progressed in or moved the ball forward in lately? Give me even in the last two years, what have black people, uh, what, what progress have we seen? So this is just fluff and bull caca. So again, as far as us taking the black uh, caucus for granted, maybe they shouldn't take us for granted. And maybe they wouldn't be facing re-elections coming this midterm because they too have taken us for granted. Talking about they the conscious of the Congress. Get the heck out of here. Get out of here. You go along with whatever they want to do for everybody else. You don't have any conscious. You're just greasing your pockets. So anyway, y'all, for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, The Demetri K Show, here on YouTube. Peace.